Hi, I've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Saturday, September 2nd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. We continue to track Hurricane Irma moving westward across the Atlantic, marching onward every day. A powerful hurricane. If we look at the floater here, you'll see the well-defined eye. And uh, this is briefly, I guess, a Category 2 now with winds of 110 as of the 11 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, it may be up uh, to Cat 3 again later. Uh, but bottom line, it's a powerful hurricane undergoing intensity fluctuations as it undergoes eye wall replacement cycles. It may have undergone two already, uh, where it's had the eye replaced by an outer eye wall that then contracts in and replaces the inner one. It's been doing it rather quickly, and it's hard to see sometimes it occurs during the night. But it has done a couple of these, and uh, it's uh, kind of alternating uh, its inner core structure over time, but pretty healthy overall. The things to note today are that we do see a little bit of dry air now on the north side. You're starting to see some of these bands get eroded right here, especially at the very end of the loop. You can kind of see the chunk that's taken out of the convection, if you will, on the north side. This is due to the fact that it's pretty pretty far north here, 19 north latitude, and this, this air in this part of the Atlantic is always dry. This stuff up here, this is never very moist. So the hurricane is naturally wrapping some of that around and getting it into the circulation here over time. Uh, there's not a lot of shear, so it's not likely to drastically weaken the hurricane, but it is limiting it a little bit, just a little bit for now. The other thing that's going on is that, as we've talked about for the last few days, the hurricane is over relatively cool water over this part of the basin. Uh, it's not very warm. Uh, it's over water of about 27 degrees Celsius. However, after about the point it's at now, it starts getting warmer. So as it comes west and west-southwest here over the next couple of days, uh, this water warms by 1 to 2 degrees, um, if not a little more and this may help the hurricane uh, begin intensifying even more than it already has. Uh, we'll get to more of that in a second. Here's a larger view from NASA showing again uh, the hurricane and a uh, perspective view showing you where the, the Lesser Antilles are here on the west side. You'll note that the hurricane is now making its turn toward the west-southwest. This is what we've been talking about for a couple of days that was expected to occur as this ridge builds to its north and we are now seeing that movement and it is now losing latitude and uh, beginning its approach that makes it a little nerve-wracking for the Leeward Antilles here. This track could end up getting quite close to these islands, the northern lessers, in a few days. This is the water vapor loop showing uh, a better view of what's going on with the steering here. So we've had this upper low that we've mentioned a few times northwest of Irma. We have a ridge to the east of that low, so we've got low, high, and then we have another low over here. And so the flow is like this around here. And so you can see that Irma is sort of south of this eastern part of the ridge, and there's kind of this northward pressing flow, uh, pressing down on Irma and trying to force it a little farther to the south now. So that's what's causing the west-southwest turn, and that's going to continue over the next couple of days. And at some point, the hurricane is expected to eventually turn back toward the west-northwest. But how close this turn is to these islands here is the big question, and we're still a few days away from this point, so there is still some natural uncertainty, but it is likely to be a close call at least for the islands, and so this is the time when you should be preparing for this hurricane uh, just in case it actually comes roaring through here because this is a powerful, very dangerous hurricane and you want to be ready. Uh, even if it misses you, you, don't, you want to be better safe than sorry with this one. This is the GFS 700 millibar flow for Monday afternoon. Here's Irma, and I'm showing you this because of the steering impacts here a little bit uh, complex. Uh, the steering flow in the lower levels is uh, basically toward the due west here at this point. This is where Irma has now come down and is beginning to try to turn back toward the west-northwest. So the low level flow is pushing it due west, but if we look at the same time but in the upper levels you'll see this upper low upper high and this northerly flow still impinging upon it so it's still trying to push it toward the south in the upper levels now hurricanes are not steered by one layer in the atmosphere they're steered by the whole thing so it's the integrated effect of all of the flow throughout the troposphere that affects these things and you can see this on the area average sounding around the hurricane. Here's a sounding in this red box, and if you don't know how to read one of these, that's fine. We're just focusing on the right-hand side here. You'll see these wind barbs, and you'll note that in the lower levels, like I showed you, you see this sort of uh, east-to-west flow, if not southeasterly flow here in the low levels, but then look at the, the mid-levels, 300, 400 millibars, 
uh, you get wind out of the northeasterly direction. So you can see the two steering flows competing with one another. The low level flow is trying to make the hurricane go north and the upper level steering flow is trying to make the hurricane go more west-southwest. These two are competing and it's at times difficult to model this correctly. So the models are likely to wiggle around trying to figure out exactly which one of these flows is going to influence the hurricane more and that will determine whether or not it actually moves through the northern leewards. Uh, in this case this is also a shearing flow so this is wind shear because you have wind at different directions and strengths at different heights so this could also impact the hurricane negatively potentially. However, the water is getting warmer like we talked about and the shear is not super strong and on this sounding it's only 10 to 15 knots maximum and it may not affect the hurricane all that much. So we're likely to see it at least remain a major hurricane if not get a little stronger as it approaches the islands and this is likely to be a major category 3 or 4 hurricane, easily a big danger regardless of exactly how strong it is. Now uh, here's a, an interesting graphic for the GFS. This is the last two days worth of runs showing where the hurricane is on Wednesday afternoon. So this is showing the forecasts for the same time. And uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because the trend in the GFS has been toward the southwest. It's been getting closer to the islands with each run. You can see that here as it starts to get a little uncomfortably close now in some of these more recent runs. We talked a couple days ago about how the GFS was giving ground and the European model was a little more consistent about showing a threat to the islands. This is continuing now as the GFS continues to get a little bit closer to the islands here at day four and five and uh, this is thus becoming a greater concern now for these leeward islands as a lot of models are now getting too close for comfort and remember the hurricane doesn't have to be right on top of you to bring dangerous winds, high surf, and flooding concerns. Uh, this is the H wharf model. This is an example of what could be near the leewards here. This is out to uh, Wednesday morning. This is a strong hurricane. Here's an, a Barbuda. Antigua, Anguilla, St. Kitts, these are the islands here and the hurricane is coming up like this just to the north. This is a scraping blow but it's an example to show you how large the storm is relative to the islands. It doesn't take much to shift this south and you're in the core of hurricane force winds in some of these islands and the tropical storm force winds all in green here extend quite far from the center so even if the storm passes just to the north of the islands you have dangerous conditions on the south side of the storm. So this is not something to take lightly. At this point, we're still a few days away. Still time for this forecast to change and shift around, but it's uncomfortably close, and no one can tell you whether it's gonna be plus or minus 50 miles in this direction. It's really hard to forecast that a few days in advance. So it's worth being prepared here, and, and you should start getting ready for this storm if you haven't already. Uh, this is the uh, European model or the European ensemble mean for day five showing the storm near the islands. Now at this point you know we're obviously still asking the question in the Bahamas, the United States, the Greater Antilles, is this a threat to us over in this part of the world here? We're still talking about a pretty long-range forecast uh, but what I can show you here is that the pattern is volatile and there is the potential for a threat here that should be you know considered and if it's always better to be prepared earlier than later and so if you're worried about this in the United States get prepared to make sure you're ready for a hurricane to come your way uh, that's always the best course of action uh, but this pattern here is what we're going to be looking at this big trough over the eastern United States this is the hurricane here you can see the ridge to its north now if this pattern were to not change if it were just sit this way and let the hurricane move in it it would move around the ridge and recurve if this pattern were staying static but that's not how the weather works all these features are moving north of the hurricane along with the hurricane as time goes on so we have to consider that this trough as it digs in we're sure the trough is going to be there in some form but how quickly it leaves is the big question and whether or not it splits into two pieces you could have the northern piece of the trough move out while the southern piece cuts off into a ball and drifts southwest. If that happens, that changes the track. If the, the trough stays all in one piece and moves northeast, that changes the track. And if the trough just sweeps out into the ocean and degrades this ridge, then it can bring the hurricane out to sea and that changes the track. Uh, so there's a little uncertainty here. Now if we go out to, this is Wednesday evening, if we go out to Saturday evening, here's that same trough starting to lift out on the European Ensemble mean, but there's some spread here. And what this mean represents is that this entire region of the country could have an upper level trough in it. We're not really sure within this oval where the trough is. The hurricane is somewhere here near northeast of the Bahamas on the model, 
but where this trough is north of it determines where it would go from here. If the trough is centered over the mid-Atlantic states, this system has a better chance to recurve east of the United States. If the trough is way back here, the system has a chance to move into the Carolinas or Florida. And if the trough is over New England, then it's, it's kind of murky uh, because the steering could be different with this ridge building in over the top connecting with this ridge, and all sorts of weird things can happen here. It's a complicated pattern. It's hard to know what's going to occur. Uh, with this kind of setup, this ridge coming across over the top of this trough is a particularly unpredictable situation. This is what we call a wave break, where this ridge comes over the top of the trough underneath of it, and that is a particularly fragile pattern for models to be predicting correctly. And on top of it all, it's eight days away. So we've still got a lot of time here for things to change. The forecast is uncertain, but the reason I'm showing you this is the pattern could feasibly support a hurricane threat to North America, and so it is worth keeping an eye on. And if you are concerned, then get prepared and make sure you have your hur hurricane plan ready to go. It's always better to be prepared, and then if the hurricane does come your way, you're ready for it. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast for Irma. It only goes out to day five. You can see how far away it is, still is from North America at that time. And even at day five, there's uncertainty here. So these islands, again, we're watching for you right now. Uh, even you know Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands got to be keeping an eye on this hurricane in case the forecast shifts a little bit south. And again, impacts extend well away from the center, and the system may start growing a little bit in size as well once it gets to this part of the basin. Likely to be a strong major hurricane, not a ton of major impediments to intensification here once the water gets warmer. It may have a little bit of wind shear to deal with, but we're expecting it to be a major hurricane regardless of that as it approaches the Leeward Antilles sometime on Wednesday at this point is when that is expected to be close. And then again, after this, who knows? Could recurve, could affect the United States. It's a long way away still. We got a week plus to watch this in the United States and the Bahamas. So uh, be ready, be prepared. That's the best course of action. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.